today we're working on Bertha and we're doing two things twice we're going to be doing the wheel hub on both sides as well as the lower control arms on both sides I have the Moog wheel hubs so I feel like the Moog is going to be probably like one of your best bets um, I think Timken is going to be the best best but I think Moog is going to be the second best we're doing good for the price and we're also doing lower control arms I've had these for about five years uh, when I bought the truck I redid the inner and the outer tie rods and it looks like the tie rod needs to be replaced again I did the inner outer tie rods and I did the upper uh, control arm I did the front shocks and springs and then I did uh, what else and I did the sway bar bushings but I didn't do the lower control arm because in order to get the bolt out the axle has to come out and I didn't have anything to powerful enough to take the axle bolt off so I didn't do that so I'm doing hubs because I think this one is the one that's humming so I just replaced both uh, and I'm gonna do the LCA's because those lower uh, ball joints were worn out five years ago when I bought the truck and I've done 70,000 uh, more miles so I, I know they're just useless at this point I'm sure so there's videos on how to get off the part but basically um, like I said to get the LCA out the axle has to come out to get the LCA off the strut has to be unbolted um, the sway bar has to be disconnected and then of course the bolts holding the front and the rear and of course it has to be disconnected from the bottom of the hub and then I'm going to reconnect the lower control arm and before I put the axle in I will go ahead and unbolt the hub and replace the whole hub assembly and disconnect it from the truck via the um, harness that controls the ABS we have to speed and all that fun stuff so <clears throat> when I get ready to replace the lower control arm so I might do the lower control arm first I might do the hub first I don't know whichever one I do first I'll be back when I'm swapping it out we can compare the parts make sure they're the same and then we'll go about it that way so I'll be back all right so brake caliper brake roller brake rotor axle sway bar link is out i got all three bolts out of the um, out of the brake hub but let me know if y'all can hear this can y'all hear that Your rotor, I mean your rotor, your hub should not make that much noise. That's a lot of noise. That's a bad hub. So is it just gonna pop out? I got all the I got all the bolts out. Is it four bolts or three? Uh oh, all of just three. Yeah, it's just three. So, and this is probably the OEM uh, hub. All right, I'll be back. I'm gonna take the hub off. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the little control arm as well. So I'll be back. We can compare the hub and the little control arm, make sure they're the same. And then when I come back after that, everything will be back together. So, yeah. 
whole lot of Bluetooth suspension going on there. All right, so for the driver side, of course, we got the, the new LCA and hub, old LCA and hub. Uh, you can see that this is doing a whole lot of nothing. And then this, oh shit, this is doing a whole lot of something. Then of course, old versus new hub. Uh, you can see that it has uh, similar connections and mountain points. And then it has the same plug, which is all to the good. It has the same, of course, amount of studs and hopefully the splines and everything fit. And then for the LCA, you can see that it is pretty much identical. Just looks a little bit newer. And these are original, so these have 170,000 miles on it. The truck had 24s on it when I bought it, so they were probably worn out then. Uh, yeah, so now I'm going to install the little control arm first, and then install the hub, and put the strut and sway bar end links and all that stuff on. And then when I get it all back together, I'll be back. And basically, I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to get the alignment later on this week, and then I'll show y'all the alignment papers that they aligned it, and I'll close out the video. So, I'll be back when I get this side done. Alright, little control arm in, hub in, uh, spring strut in, axle in, harness hooked up. All nuts have been ugga dugga down on level one on my m18 mid torque um i greased up the tie rod end i greased up the upper control arm i greased up the lower control arm sway bar in link in uh oh shoot i need to do the axle nut i'm gonna do the axle nut and then slap the rotor on the bracket caliper slap the wheel on oh shoot i need to put the bolts I need to put the, the upper strut butts on and then this side is going to be done i'm gonna do the driver side and then i'm gonna give you my point of view on how i felt about this job because it is like it is how cold outside right now it is 46 degrees which is the high is the i think the high of today is 46 is what it is right now and i'm not in the sun so yeah like I'm doing this with just regular regular tools. The only thing I got specialized is my M18 mid torque. I mean, I'm just regular regular tooling out here. Me and my Harbor Freight tools. You know, we out here just making it work. So I haven't used that one torque wrench, and I'm not going to use a torque wrench until I torque on my lug nuts. So yeah, I will be back in a second. You know, Harbor Freight Jack. Harbor Freight, Jack Stan, you know, is out here doing regular people's stuff. Because I got regular money, like a regular person. Alright guys, it is 6.46. The truck is done and out of the garage. We started at 11 o'clock. Then we had to run to the store and had to get uh, the rental tool for the big boys. Because the actual nut was a 36. Uh, So yeah, let's call it six and a half well, let's call it seven hours uh to do both sides for the lower control arms and for the uh both hubs so i don't know what the shop time is for doing both of them but i did it in seven hours first time doing it uh and i don't think that's too bad i forgot how much the lcas were i got it from rock auto uh, i have i have the aluminum lower control arms so i bought whatever the aluminums were that they had and then uh, I got the Moog hubs off of Amazon. I think it was like $260 for both of them. Something like that. $280 something. I'll put the link to Amazon for the Moogs. Like I said, the Moogs are supposed to be the second best. Timken is supposed to be the best. But the Timkins were like $250 each. So I was like, eh, I'm going to save a couple dollars and just get uh, the Moog since, you know, they seem to be good and everything else, so why wouldn't their 
hubs be good. So, you know, both of the old LCAs, and then I have the hubs over there. So I want to let you hear the difference between the new hub and the old hub. Don't mind the garage. I had to move a bunch of stuff out the way so I could fit the truck in. So if you haven't been watching the Z50R series, go watch them because time because by the time this comes out, this should be wrapped up and should have done the first drive, first ride by that time. So let me flip my mic around so y'all can kind of see if y'all can hear the difference between both of these hubs. And this is going to be the good hub. This hub was replaced maybe 60,000 miles ago uh, by the dealership because I bought a warranty for my truck. So they did this one under warranty. It cost me like $100, something like that. It was like a $500 job at the dealership. And this is the OEM one. So let me turn the mic around and I'm gonna see if I can capture the sound uh, on video so y'all can kind of hear the noise uh, that it makes. So I don't know if the mic is going to pick up the noise, but this is going to be the this is going to be the good hub and of course you don't hear a whole lot of anything and then this is going to be the bad hub Just for one more comparison, the good hub. Like I said, so this had got to the point where at first I didn't know what it was. I thought it was my uh, my brake caliper, like kind of locking up when I turn. When I, I, I would turn to the right, it would make like a, it would make like a, like a. I don't, I don't know if I can. It would make like this weird humming growling noise without making a right turn and making that right turn put all the load on the bad hub which was on the patcher side and then as i started driving more and more and more and more and more this last time i went to durham and on the way back it was howling i mean at, at highway speeds it was just like Ooh. but the weird part is is that when i would turn right to put a load on it the noise would go away but if I turned, if I was just going straight, or if I made a left turn and the load came off of it, it would make noise. So, you know, I figured, I was like, all right, I know I had this in replace, but, you know, instead of going back and forth, oh, I replaced the bad one, and then 50,000 miles later, replaced this one, 50,000 miles later, replaced this one. I just figured, since I had to do both of the lower control arms, I will go ahead and just swap both control arms both hubs and then I know the next time I need to do something it's going to be in the tire rods out of tire rods and uh upper control arms so just kind of keep the stuff you know on kind of the same schedules and stuff but I could pray but I replace the upper control arms in the tire rods out of tire rods uh when I about 60,000 miles ago or so so yeah, this will be the it. I don't know what I look like, but this will be the end of this video. Um, I really want to call a shop and see how much they would charge for this job. So if I do end up calling a shop, probably call like Firestone, something like that, because I got a card with them, so they'd be happy to give me a quote. I may call Firestone um, and see what their quote is. And then I will see if I can, I might just look up whatever the new, whatever the price is for, for the lower controls are, for the lower control arms now. And just kind of put up a, okay, this is what I will, this is what I paid in parts. And this is what a independent shop is going to charge for this job. Maybe I'll call GM dealership and see what they price for, Firestone, what they price for. And then what the parts cost me from Rock Auto and from uh, Amazon. And that way you kind of get like a little bit of comparison. But I see why people end up driving their cars and don't get stuff fixed. Like getting struts and uh, getting struts and shocks replaced. Because it's like a thousand dollars to get a shock to replace 
your rear shocks and your front struts so I see why people don't don't get the stuff done because it costs a bunch of money so yeah and I may do a video uh, about you know is it cheaper to own a newer car or is it cheaper to maintain a older car so we'll see but for now the Yukon should be good to go I do have two more videos for the Yukon coming one of them is going to be an airbag uh, sensor replacement because my SRS light is on and then I think it's my charcoal canister or something about the charcoal canister that to replace as well so I will have two more videos for the Yukon coming up for all of y'all that do care which is not a lot of y'all because my starter video didn't nobody watch it so you're probably not gonna watch it either so yeah whatever but and everything you do from three-wheelers to mini bikes to Honda Z50s to Mazdas to Yukons think build and most importantly enjoy peace